good morning and welcome back to this course of microengineering as per the earlier discussion we already started with microwave semiconductor devices that is our module number 4 in our previous lecture we developed a theory working principle of the special type of a diodes that is a gun diode and impart diodes the gun diode and impart diodes they are basically two different types of a diode which essentially utilize for the same purpose both of these diodes can be utilized for generation of the microwave signal as well as they can also be used for amplification of the microwave signal but the principal difference of the working mechanism for the gun diode is based on a principle known as transferred electron mechanism and that's why the gun diodes are normally known as transferred electron devices on the other hand we saw the another family of a diode which was labeled with reed family now the working principle of this diode is based on two separate operations first operation is to generate the avalanche multiplication breakdown effect and the second effect is the transit time which is a time taken by the charge carrier in order to flow out of the circuit so the principal working of the impart diode in order to generate a negative resistance was based on the two separate processes now we go further and we will see two more remaining family members of the reed diode that is trapped diode and buried diode now remember here that the principal working of all these diode more or less is going to remain same in the family so the diodes today which we are going to see those are also going to belong from the same diode family that is they belong to the reed family so today we are going to discuss the remaining two types of reed diode which belong to the family of a reed diode so trapped diode and buried diode so these two diodes we are going to study and we will see their working construction and how typically they are used in a microwave applications and there afterwards towards the end of this fourth module semiconductor devices we will study in detail the parametric amplifier okay so first of all let us go ahead with these two diodes trapped diode and buried diode so for that i will be taking help of my own book so trapped diode so again the trapped is a abbreviation and the abbreviation trapped stands for trapped plasma avalanche transit time effect type of a diode okay so the trapped is an abbreviation actually and it is the short form for trapped plasma avalanche transit time effect based devices or diodes now here the name itself indicates that uh, similar to the case of impart diode these diodes are also going to utilize the avalanche breakdown effect right but slightly the mechanism of trapped diode is different from the impart diode so we will see what is the difference principally between the impart diode and trapped diode as they belong to the same family but little bit their working principle is going to be different a common thing which is observed between the operating principle of impart and trapped diode is that both are going to utilize avalanche breakdown effect and transit time effect right so the long form for the trapped diode that we saw that is a trapped plasma avalanche transit time effect based device or diode so this is highly efficient microwave generator source and it can operate in the range from several hundred megahertz to several gigahertz right so trapped diodes have a little bit higher amount of efficiency when it is compared to their siblings that is the impart diode and these diodes are able to generate microwave frequency in the range from hundreds of megahertz to several gigahertz right the construction wise these diode typically consist of different types of structures like p plus n n plus structure or we can replace this with the n plus p p plus structure right so here the n type or p type semiconductor is sandwiched between highly doped p plus and n plus region on the other sides right 
the typical width of the depletion region for trapezoid diode varies between 2.5 to 12.5 microns okay so this is a typical width of the depletion region exhibited by the trapezoid diode the doping of the depletion region that is the inner layer is made such that the dc electric field just prior to the breakdown is well above the saturated drift velocity of charge carriers right now the highly doped region which are connected or join at the two ends of this drift region we call it as a p plus region and n plus region and these highly doped regions are kept possibly thin and their length is in typical range of 2.5 to 7.5 micron the diameter of this diode ranges from 50 micron if it is being operated in continuous wave operation and it will be having a diameter of 750 micron at a lower frequency for high peak power operation right so though the trapper diode is similar to impart diode in the structure the mode of the operation of the trapezoid diode is different from the impart diode and it also exhibits higher efficiency in comparison to the impart diode so this statement is very important right so the trapezoid diode belongs to the same family of reed diode but it is still efficient when it is compared to impart diode right and the mode of operation of trapezoid diode slightly differs from that of the impart diode right now here the basic difference between the working principle of impart diode and trapezoid diode we are going to see. Now in impart diode we saw that we are making use of two different signals. One signal which is normally a DC signal we use to bias the impart diode in the reverse breakdown region right and along with that DC biasing signal we used a small source of AC signal right or the AC voltage. So in impart diode, a small AC signal amplitude is used to build up a large signal. Okay. So this was the case in the case of an impart diode. But what is the difference here in the trapezoid diode? In the trapezoid diode, the large signal oscillations are produced by triggering of a pulses. So remember over here that the basic difference between the impart diode and trapezoid diode is that in order to generate the effect of amplification the impart diodes are going to make use of small signal ac voltage okay and in order to generate the amplification process the trapezoid diodes are going to make use of short pulses rather than ac signal okay so this is the different requirement to use these diodes as an amplifying devices right the basic operation of trapart is based on semiconductor pn junction diode and it is also used in a reverse biased condition okay so the reverse biased condition whatever the current that is going to flow through this particular diode will be well above in the excess okay so those who are encountered during the normal avalanche operation we know that whenever a diode is reverse biased the reverse bias when it is exceeded certain threshold voltage a cumulative breakdown of large number of charge carrier will take place at the junction and this process we call it as a avalanche breakdown process okay so during the avalanche breakdown a large amount of reverse current starts flowing through the diode if these diodes are ordinary pn junction diodes then the diode may burn out but these diodes, that is the reed diodes or impart and trapart diodes, they will not burn. They are designed in a such a way that in the reverse bias condition, whenever avalanche breakdown take place and whenever a large current surge out through the structure, they can handle this large current without burning, right? So how we are going to make use of this trapart diode? So the principal working of a trapart diode is based on a processing of a plasma signal okay what is that plasma signal that we will describe now so this particular figure shows how typical construction of a trapart diode look like it is a simple construction where the n type semiconductor slab is sandwiched between two highly doped p plus and n plus region and this construction possesses a junction 
right so normally what we are going to do is this trapper diode we are going to reverse bias okay so that means we apply the external dc voltage such that the negative terminal of the battery we are going to connect to p plus region and positive terminal of the battery we are going to connect to n plus so that the junction will get reverse bias in order to operate that in the breakdown region right so if the reverse bias across the diode is increased above the breakdown the diode current will initially increase with the voltage okay now however when the current becomes sufficiently high right so what happens if we increase the applied reverse voltage above certain breakdown voltage what will happen a large current will start flowing through the structure now this large current will bring the effect of generating large number of electron hole pair at the junction okay so large number of electron and hole pairs are getting generated and this large number of electron and hole pair are supposed to form a water like structure or they will generate a pool of electron and hole and the special name to this pool of electron and hole which is generated by a large current is given as a plasma so what we call this as the large number of electrons and holes whenever they are generated we call this as a plasma okay so this plasma is produced by the secondary ionization process so that is a avalanche breakdown process that we say right now this plasma when it gets formed so the plasma nothing but it consists of large number of released electron and hole pairs at the junction now this plasma will become greater in the size okay so when this plasma becomes excessive at the middle layer what it will form is it will itself form a voltage across the junction okay so this plasma so this particular sentence is very important this plasma will generate large potential across the junction and because of that the diode voltage which we have applied across the diode in order to reverse bias it will get reduced so here the principle is when we apply a reverse bias to this particular diode and when we increase the reverse bias to certain threshold voltage when we cross that a large reverse current will start flowing through the diode right now this large reverse current will generate enormous amount of electron hole pair at the junction now these enormous generated electron hole we call this process as an avalanche breakdown okay and these generated charge carrier they are going to form certain pool and this we are going to call it as a plasma now this plasma consists of electron and hole pair it grows up to such a level that this plasma at the central part of the diode is going to form a voltage barrier potential itself so this plasma will act as a voltage barrier at the junction of this particular diode now because of the forming of the voltage at the junction the externally applied reverse bias voltage will start dropping down right so here the process is we are getting increase in the current large reverse current in the external circuit and the voltage applied across the diode will start getting dropping so this is the opposite behavior right so why the voltage reverse voltage which is applied across the diode starts getting dropping this is because of the large amount of plasma that got formed at the junction which will act as a source of a voltage and this voltage form at the junction will lower the externally applied bias voltage so with the increase in reverse current please remember the voltage which is applied across the diode will start decreasing okay so here therefore the diode is said to exhibit a dynamic negative resistance right so that means the voltage applied across the diode is decreasing while the current flowing through the diode is getting increased so this is the opposite phenomena and if we take the ratio of this voltage to the current we will find that the resistance developed is a negative and whenever negative resistance is developed in the device this particular device 
can be mounted in a resonator circuit and continuous oscillations can be produced from this particular device right so with a proper loading this particular diode will switch back and forth periodically and it will start oscillating when it enters into its negative resistance region and the oscillations produced by this trapard diode will be of the order of micro frequency range so this is a simple principle how the trapard diode will exhibit a negative resistance okay so the construction and voltage and current waveform are shown over here so this voltage is a very high in the avalanche breakdown region so the avalanche breakdown region is formed between this p plus and n junction right and the current pulses are shown over here right so the trapper diodes are basically used in low power doppler radars and they are also used in the local oscillator in the different types of a radar system they are also used as a radar radio altimeter in order to find the height of the object above the atmosphere and trapper diodes are also used in a microwave beacons and landing systems these diodes are relatively highly efficient compared to the impart diode and therefore they can be used over the frequency range from few hundreds of megahertz to several gigahertz right only the disadvantage of trapper diode is that they do possess high noise figure okay and it cannot be used at the upper micro frequencies because due to this particular drawback it can generate strong harmonics and short duration current pulses when it is getting utilized at the high frequency okay otherwise trapper diodes are much more efficient when they are compared with respect to impart diode right so we'll move ahead and we will see the last family member of the reed diode that is the berit diode okay so the berit diode principally they are working on the same criteria that is they are going to make use of transit time effect say please remember in all these diodes that is impart diode trapper diode and berit diode the working principle they are going to make use of transit time effect and that's why all these diodes they belong to the family of diode which is known as transit time devices or ttd okay so let us see what is the basic difference in the working principle of this berit diode again berit stands for the abbreviation and the long form for berit diode is barrier injection transit time diode or sometimes it is also known as barrier injected transit time effect devices right so how this particular berit diode works the berit diode utilizes the injection principle and the transit time delay properties of minority charge carrier to produce the negative resistance at lower microwave frequency so this is the principle of working of a berit diode okay please remember impart diodes trapper diodes and berit diodes all are going to produce negative resistance effect and the negative resistance effect created by each of these diode is a little bit different way right so in a impart diode what we saw in a impart diode avalanche multiplication will take place due to avalanche multiplication whatever charge carriers are getting generated those are getting transited and they will be brought outside of the device such that the applied voltage and the generated current will lag behind by 180 degree and that's why the negative resistance is developed in the impart case in the trapart case we saw that we apply the reverse voltage and we will exceed beyond certain threshold and that's why the plasma that is we call it as a large amount of electron and hole pair that is getting generated at the junction and this plasma will itself form as a voltage produced at the junction which will lower the applied external reverse voltage and thus it will tend to create the negative resistance effect now in the case of berit diode over here the principle is very simple and it is explained the berit diode utilizes the injection principle and transit time delay properties of the minority carriers please remember so the operation of the berit diode in order to produce the negative resistance effect 
is completely based on the principle of injecting minority charge carrier and then making use of transit time effect right so remember that varied diode makes use of two principle in order to generate negative resistance effect first what it will do is it will make use of a minority charge carrier to be injected in the structure and these minority charge carriers will be pulled out by utilizing their transit time and a negative resistance effect is developed in the circuit right so the buried diodes are formed by forward bias pn junction with npn or pn ip or pn structure or in some cases with metal to metal configuration also right so there is a different variety of constructing the buried diodes okay so the buried diodes are normally used in the forward bias junction please remember so this is the basic difference of buried diode and the other two family members that is impart and trapart the operation of impart and trapart diode is by making utilization of reverse bias condition while in the case of buried diode it works on the forward bias mechanism okay so the structure you can make use of any structure which is mentioned over here so in order to construct buried diode we can make use of a pnp structure or we can introduce an intrinsic layer in between n and p structure okay and we can make use of pn with metal or metal n type semiconductor and metal configuration so these are the possible configuration in order to construct the buried diode right the minority charge carriers which are injected into the drift region the transit time delay is going to provide the required phase shift between the current and voltage in order to generate the negative resistance okay, so this sentence is important the transit time delay property is utilized in order to generate the phase shift between the applied voltage and developed current in the external circuit which will give us a negative resistance behavior right so after mounting the diode in the resonator cavity the induced noise in the cavity itself is sufficient to start the diode to oscillate right so the drift time a constant external current is getting delivered to the resonator from the dc bias the buried diodes are low power diodes and they are operating over a few milliwatts of power and that is also with a lower efficiency so the drawback of buried diode is they are low power devices and their efficiency is also low but they are less noisy when they are compared with the impart diode okay so we know that in the case of impart diode the principle of working is based on avalanche breakdown but here in the case of buried diode there is no avalanche breakdown process right so that's why these diodes are going to produce a less noise in comparison to the impart diode right so but however the buried diodes are going to provide low bandwidths of operation okay so nominally the buried diodes are used over the frequency range from 4 to 8 gigahertz that means they are used to produce lower values of frequency with a continuous power of around 50 milliwatt right so this particular table gives us all of the information of the different types of microwave devices that we studied still far semiconductor devices like microwave transistors including current control devices and field effect devices okay so these are the typical application and advantages okay so when we come across the transferred electron devices which are normally called as a gun diodes okay so those, these are the application and these are the advantages right avalanche transit time devices that we saw in the case of trapart and impart okay so here these are the application and these are the advantages and finally the transit time effect device that is a buried diode we have these application and advantages so more or less the impart diodes and gun diodes they are utilized in order to generate higher range of the frequencies right and while the buried diode is a good choice in order to generate lower values of a frequency and at low power level right trapart and imparts they can be used over continuous 
power continuous wave power as well as at peak pulse operation at high power level also okay so this is the just in short the summary comparison of whatever different types of micro devices we saw the transistors the field effect transistor current control transistor transferred electron device and transit time effect devices okay so i hope uh, we have completed each and every different types of a micro devices and today we completed the trapart diode and buried diode okay now the last part that we are going to see now is the parametric amplifier if you recall when we studied the varactor diode so that time we discussed that varactor diodes are voltage variable or voltage controlled variable capacitors right so these diodes are used to produce variable reactance in the circuit so the reactance is the parameter of the device and this reactance of the device we can vary by varying its capacitance okay and the capacitance of varactor diode can be varied by applying a variable voltage so now next we are going to see parametric amplifier in which the name itself indicates parametric amplifier so parametric amplifier are the amplifier circuit in which a specific device is used and we are going to vary a specific parameter of that particular device in order to produce the amplification process so that's why the parametric amplifiers are based on variation of certain parameter of a particular device which is utilized for amplification purpose so in our next discussion we are going to see parametric amplifier so why the name parametric amplifier is given because parametric amplifiers are going to utilize certain specific device to vary its particular parameter in order to generate the amplification process okay so in our next discussion we go into the details of parametric amplifiers and how they are constructed by making use of varactor diodes that we are going to see in our next discussion